first question that we would like to ask you is just take us back in time of, uh, and help us set the context of when you discovered objectivism and what was the environment like at the time? Um, it was about 19, uh, say 1958. And I happened to see on TV, which was not in our room, but was at a, a club, uh, the part of the Fountainhead movie, which I really found interesting. I didn't know anything about it. So I went to one of my teachers, said, what is this? He said, oh, it's Ayn Rand, the Fountainhead. So I bought the, so I really liked the part of the movie I saw. I bought the book right away and I really loved it. And because it was 1958, uh, I read, when I got that book, there was an insert that said, you can also read Atlas Shrugged, which is 1957. So I immediately bought that book and couldn't put it down for three days and uh, read, read the whole thing through. So I was completely mesmerized. I was uh, a bit chagrined that my roommates weren't the slightest bit interested in any of it. So I figured, okay, that's their problem. <laughs> So I just kept doing it. And then uh, when I went to uh, Cornell for graduate school, they had started the tape lectures. And Nathaniel Brandon came up for, I guess, the opening objectivism lecture. But the rest was on tape. And then when I finished uh, at Cornell, I moved to Washington, DC. And then there was a regular group who did the taped courses. I was a representative myself for a while and a lot of others. So I took them all. And uh, uh, then I went to all the conferences starting in the 1990s. And uh, I've read everything Ayn Rand's ever written. I, I believe most of it more than once, many more than several times. So that was, um, that was my acquaintance with Ayn Rand. And I so met her once. Uh, she came for the opening of Objectivism with Brandon in Washington, D.C. around 19, uh, let's see, 1960, around 1964. She came up in person, so I met her for the first time. And they stayed for the question period for the first lecture. And it was, again, all taped. That was a very large crowd, several hundred. So then we started getting the local tapes for our objectivist group in Washington. And that was much smaller, maybe 10 regulars, sometimes 15. Right. So uh, what was the context? So nowadays, uh, we meet people like online and I've, I've met all kinds of uh, uh, objectivists and famous intellectuals uh, through the internet. And then sometimes in person, whenever they decide to travel to, uh, to South America. Okay. Um, but what was, the, what was the scene back in the 60s and 70s in terms of like meeting people? You know, today we have some, some known objectivists like Harry Beanswanger and Benner Peacock. Uh, what was the context for you to, to get to know them? I didn't know, uh, I didn't meet either of them, I don't think until the, they started doing the ARI summer meetings starting in 1990s sometime. I, so I had not met either one of them. And um, so I didn't really talk much with uh, Leonard, talked more with, with Harry. And I went to all of the summer ARI courses, almost all of them. Although lately, because of my age, it's harder for me to travel. I haven't been doing many, but I, I usually am able to get part of them online, even when I'm home. So I went to all the functions, and I went to all the Ford Hall forums when Ayn Rand was speaking, and, and all the ones when Leonard was speaking until he stopped. And plus, right. there were various other lectures occasionally, and various there were things in New York although I didn't go to there too much, but sometimes. Yes, I see. 